Namaste, welcome to our guidance classes for group 1 services examination conducted by TSET. As you know that science and technology is one of the concept from the 13 areas of the group 1 syllabi. In science and technology, the basic concepts of physics is very important to understand the other branches of uh, the science and technology. So, as you know that in the last episode we discussed about uh, the motion and the rest. As you know that the motion and rest both are relative words. So, which is uh, uh, you can say as uh, both sides of the same coin, you, can, you cannot divide it uh, as which is at rest and which is at motion clear like so if you want to understand all these things then we have to discuss about the basics laws that is a newton's laws uh, as the first uh, newton law explains the concept of uh, moment of inertia so what is the moment of inertia unless and until if the external force acting on it then only there is a change of position in the body otherwise it will maintain it will continue as its same position Okay. Now, come to the next one is the Newton's second law. As the Newton's second law says that, as you know that, uh, Newton's first law in order to move an object needs a force, correct? Generally, a force is a push or pull, maybe push or maybe pull. For example, the front door needs a push before it can open, correct? So, Newton's second law asserts that a force depends on the mass of an object accepting that force and its acceleration a quickly pushing a hand forward to open the door will create a much more forcible entrance than if the same person slowed their approach so now we will see that means here the force is called simply f is equal to m a f is equal to m a means here simply the rate of m a you can write it just now you can write it as uh, m of v minus u by t or simply m v minus m u by t m v e is a final momentum and m u is the initial momentum a uh, rate of change of uh, momentum it is rate of change of momentum is called the force that is a uh, is a about the force and uh, Newton's second law explains the force clear ok. So, now we are going to discuss about uh, the force and its application. So, as just now I said f is equal to as you know that m of v minus u by t r m v minus m u by t clear ok. So, the units of force is uh, in SI units it is Newton, in CGS units it is Dines and the relation between these two 1 Newton is equal to simply we call it as 10 to the power of 5 Dines this is a relation between a Newton and a dance. So, this is a very very important. There are you can classify the forces as basically as two kinds one is a weak force another one is a, a strong force magnetical force is there gravitational force is there clear electrical force is there. So, all these uh, different uh, kinds of forces here simply we call it as this one the force depends on the mass we can say uh, depends on the mass clear. So, f is equal to m a just now I said f is equal to m a ok. So, depends on the force means here you as you know that here uh, f is equal to m g this is called gravitational force f is equal to m g is a gravitational force 
clear and if you want to know so the force between two celestial bodies the force between two celestial bodies mass of one celestial body is say m1 mass of the another celestial body is m2 means and the uh, simply the distance between the two uh, celestial bodies as r simply f is proportional to m1 m2 f is proportional to r square 1 by r square and f is proportional to m1 m2 by r square or f is equal to g m1 m2 by r square this one is this one is called universal gravitational force f is called the universal gravitational force and g is called universal gravitational constant this is a very very important g is called universal gravitational constant this g value is 6.617 into 10 power minus 27 newton meter square per kg square this is the value universal gravitational constant here so means m1 m2 mass of the two celestial bodies clear so generally we can calculate this one is and as you know that here we are using the gravitational force g that's a, a g is a gravitational force the value gravitational force is g is equal to actually g value is 9.8 meter per second square this one called as acceleration due to gravity here g is called acceleration due to gravity it is maximum at okay maximum at poles and minimum at equator okay so it is uh, around uh, 9.83 meter per second square at poles and 9.78 meter per second square at the equator clear this so this gravitation will change with respect to with respect to uh, the position nature of the plane also the g will be varies so when you compare the g value with earth earth and moon when you compare the g value with earth and moon here the acceleration due to gravity is 1/6 of our earth that's the mean it means uh, if you say g is the acceleration due to gravity at earth then the acceleration due to gravity on moon this is g, gm you will say the acceleration due to gravity at gm means here and it is acceleration due to gravity at moon capital m so it is uh, simply gm by 6 means here simply 9.8 by 6 means here uh, uh, approximately it is 138 1.62 1 meter per second square on the moon for that reason there is no atmosphere on the moon this is one of the reason we have to notice all these things here clear okay now coming to the next one newton's third law newton's third law means here so this is a very frequently used for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction that is called newton's third law all these uh, projection of rockets works on the newton's third law the force don't act in isolation each is always accompanied by another force that pushes or pulls in the opposite direction when pushing a chair across the floor for example not only does an exert of force that moves the chair but the floor exerts another force that is called friction opposing the push means uh, if you want to push or pull a chair on a ground means uh, between the ground and the chair there is a, some frictional force 
So, when you overcome the frictional force, then only the chair can move. Means you have to provide the force more than the frictional force existing between the chair and the ground. That is a very, very important. So, means if you take it as a, a bullock cart, a bullock cart means here or horse cart means here if you take it as. So, it uh, just it push the land how much force it push the land in the same force equally it push the horse to move forward then in this manner uh, this uh, bullock cart or horse carts will move. For example, Newton's third law in action including a car wheels push backward on the ground making use of the road friction force and moving forward. So, when you see when you apply the uh, acceleration, uh, then there is a frictional force existing between the tides and the road. When it overcomes, then the tides move forward and the car or, or the vehicle move forward. Even, let us take uh, observe the birds. The birds wings push the air down and back to generate lift and fly forward. This is a principle uh, just there in the birds fly. Simply what will happen? The birds wings simply push the air down and back to generate lift and fly forward even swimming also. Let us take a, just you have you are observing a swimming or moving a boat. In swimming what will happen? Generally we will push the water, we will push the water with the hands in opposite direction, backward direction, correct? You are moving the, your hands backward direction. So, then the water push you in forward direction. So, pushing the water backward direction is the action, pulling you, of course, pushing you in forward direction, that is the opposite action, correct? So, every action, there is an equal opposite reaction. So, that is called Newton's third law. Most of the things uh, uh, are, most of the activities are done by the Newton's third law only. These are the few examples to know about the Newton's third law. Clear? Now, now coming to the gravity. Most famous as the force that makes things fall down. For fundamentally, gravity is a force of attraction. Not only does it attract things to earth's surface, but it keeps planets orbiting stars. Gravity is also the reason things have weight. Everything has mass, a measure of the amount of matter in an object, but the force of earth's gravitation pull is what creates weight. So, you feel means this is a very important and interesting phenomenon. So, you feel a weight because of gravity, you feel weight because of gravity. That is a very, very important. Any object has a certain weight because of gravity. So, means you feel a zero weight, zero weight in vacuum. You feel zero weight in vacuum. What is the reason? There is no gravity. Clear? I will give one more example. I will give one more example. You are traveling on a lift. Suddenly, the lift was broken. The lift is falling down. Then what will happen? You feel that you are weightless. The reason is the gravity at that time is zero. Then already you know that. So, actually that is V is equal to or the force F is equal to m of a minus g. Both are in different directions a minus c. If a becomes a is equal to g means uh, f of g minus g that is m of 0 which is 0 means you feel weightless. In space you feel weightless the reason is there is no gravity. You feel weight because of gravity. If there is no gravity, then you feel a weightless. Already I said there are so many factors 
at the pole you have the maximum gravity and at equator it is a minimum and where is there some uh, what you call it as a different uh, minerals are there or uh, uh, heavy uh, metals are there then the gravity also influences that is about uh, gravity. So, actually uh, a body you feel a body or you feel uh, having weight because of gravity. So, means uh, generally the weight we will consider as the gravitation force acting on it. That is the reason we will say W is equal to mg. The weight of the body is called mg. Clear? So, that is a that is a very very important here. So, when you are at vacuum your weight is zero because there is no gravity. That is the reason you feel a weightless. So, very important thing is so for example, so we are taking a celestial body as a ma having mass m 1 and another celestial body having mass m 2 and the distance between these two is r then f is the, the force universal force this is directly proportional to m 1 m 2 and f is proportional to 1 by r square and f is proportional to m 1 m 2 by r square or f is equal to g m 1 m 2 by r square here g is called universal gravitational constant and this g value is 6.617 into 10 power minus 27 Newton meter square per kg square. So, this value is a very important here that is called universal gravitational constant. Okay. Then what is the relation between uh, these two means uh, when you take it as a body is m g correct and here this is a g m okay, g m m 1 m 2 g m by r square. Okay, then we can say the, the relation between g m m we call it as say m is the mass of the earth and this small m is mass of the object then the relation between the gravitational force is uh, m g here the universal gravitational force is g m m by r square then you can cancel this and this m then then you will get as g is equal to g m by r square this is the relation between small g and capital G means uh, acceleration due to gravity and universal gravitational constant. So, this is the most important thing here already I said. So, here uh, uh, at poles it is maximum it is a 9.83 meter per second square, but uh, at equator it will be uh, around 9.78 meter per second square. In general for our calculation purpose g will be considered as 9.8 meter per second square. These are the values generally we are using clear. Okay. So, means here uh, when you consider this a uh, lift moving that. So, then with the weight of the body w is equal to m into g plus r minus c a. So, means plus r minus c a means here if the lift is moving upwards the gravitational force is always downwards means here acceleration is in upward direction and g will be in downward direction. So, the weight of the body is w is equal to m of g minus c a. For example, the lift is moving downwards means acceleration is moving down of course, in downward direction gravitational force also in the same direction 
then so w is equal to m of g plus a. So, you have to remember uh, these things, this is a, a most important concept, clear, ok. So, means and as you know that <coughs> about the moon and earth, when you consider the moon and earth, the acceleration due to gravity at moon is one sixth of uh, the acceleration due to gravity when you compare with our air. Earth. So, here uh, g of earth is equal to 6 times of g of moon or g of moon is equal to 1 sixth of uh, g of earth. This is the relation between the acceleration due to gravity at earth at moon. For that reason, so there is no atmosphere in the uh, in the moon there is no atmosphere the reason behind is there clear. So, that is a, a very very important and uh, so here we are using by using this one we will tell it as a escaping velocity is and we will orbital velocity escaping velocity orbital velocity you are using uh, two words uh, based on this uh, gravitational force. So, means escaping velocity is root 2 z r and uh, uh, orbital velocity is root g r and g is the uh, acceleration due to gravity r is the uh, radius of our earth and v is the uh, escaping velocity or v o is the orbital velocity. The relation between uh, escaping velocity and orbital velocity v e is equal to root 2 times of v o. This is a very very important relation. Escaping velocity and orbital velocity v e is equal to root 2 v o is a, a very very important and the escaping velocity is of uh, at earth is 11.2 kilometers per second. The escaping velocity of uh, on earth is 11.2 kilometers per a second. What is escaping velocity? Escaping velocity means uh, so the, uh, the velocity is required to project a body to escape from the gravitational force of our earth ok that is uh, escaping velocity. Orbital velocity means uh, the velocity required to move in the uh, specified orbital is called the orbital velocity. This is about uh, escaping velocity and orbital velocity generally they will uh, ask uh, about on this one. As you know that uh, uh, this gravitational force and the relation between uh, gravitational force and and uh, universal gravitational uh, constant clear ok. Now, we are shifting to the next one that is called centripetal force. So, actually the forces can be uh, uh, considered of course, to we can classify the forces with respect to uh, a center as two kinds one is called centripetal force, a second one is called centrifugal force. Centripetal force and centrifugal force means the force acting towards the center that is called centripetal force. The force away from the center is called centrifugal force. So, means here centripetal force and centrifugal force, I will give a small example means uh, uh, the washing machines the washing machines works on centrifugal force because means here uh, so the dust part heavy dust particles will drive away from the center and it, uh, driven towards that drainage and those uh, dust particles will uh, push for to the drainage and that will be sent to it that is called centrifugal force and centrifugal force means uh, it acts towards the center. So, means here they have generated the waves in C because of centripetal force the waves will comes upwards and fall downwards. The low speed limits posted for on and off ramps are there for this reason the centripetal force. When something accelerates along a circular path the centripetal force keeps it going in the circle. For curved exit ramps, 
the speed limits have been specially calculated to ensure that the centripetal force keeps the car on its path. So, that is a, are you understand that is a centripetal and centrifugal force. The force acting towards, okay, is simply we call it as a, uh, F is equal to, we will say uh, F is equal to m v square by r, F is equal to m v square by r, okay. Centripetal force or centrifugal force, this, uh, these two can be calculated by using this formula, clear. Now, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, centripetal and centrifugal forces and all. So, I am using the word force. Now, come to the next one that is work and energy, work and energy means here uh, uh, the work, work happens whenever a force moves something, whenever someone does work on another object like moving a chair across the floor, they also transfer energy into the object. In this case, the person moving the chair gives it kinetic energy and the energy of the motion. Okay. So, this is a very, very important. Basically, we have two kinds of uh, energies. So, one is called uh, kinetic energy and uh, potential energy. Clear? So, kinetic energy and potential energy. So, now what is kinetic energy? What is a potential energy? We will see it. Generally, kinetic energy K e is called half m e square and the potential energy P e is equal to also of m g h. This is called a kinetic energy and potential energy. Now, from this you can understand, from this, this equations you can understand from, from all formulas. When the body is in moving, it has a kinetic energy. When the body is at rest, it has potential energy. When the water falls, means here water falls. So, here when you observe the water falls, so there what happens? The kind potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. That is a, a relation between this here. Clear? When the body is moving in motion, it has a kinetic energy. When the body is rest, it has a potential energy. So, the body is at h meters height, that is it has a potential energy. When the body is moving, it has a kinetic energy. So, when the body is moving, it has a kinetic energy. When the body is at rest, we have. So, this part of a law of conservation energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed. That is called is a law of conservation of energy. We can, there is no possibility to create or destroy the energy. We can convert one kind of energy to another kind of en energy, but there is no creation or no destruction. This is called a conservation of energy. This concept helps explain how fuel and engine works and how why car owners need to buy gasoline or charge their vehicles. When a driver starts up their car, the car does not create a kinetic energy to move. Instead, the chemical or potential energy in the fuel of the car combusts in the engine to generate motion, converting potential energy into kinetic energy. This is the most important. This is the most important here. What will happen? The petrol, petrol means here uh, and the fuel or uh, the fuel, petrol or diesel or, or gasoline, whatever it may be, the fuel combusts the engine to generate the motion. What will happen here? It converts potential energy to kinetic energy, then the car will moves it. This is a, a very important uh, scientific phenomena you have to understand. So, here conservation of energy are using that is called simply E is equal to M c square. You, e is equal to M c square. This is called uh, 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 what you call it as mass and energy equivalence uh, equation. Einstein equation we call it as simply a very familiar. This is a, a conservation of energy. 
E equal to m c square, where m is the mass, c is the speed of light and E is the energy generated. Conservation of energy means there is no possibility of uh, energy creation or destruction, but you can transfer one kind of energy to another kind of energy that is a, a transformation. If you take it as a bulb, so means uh, the bulb is an instrument which convert electrical energy into light energy and heat energy, correct. So, that is a one means for example, if you take it as a generator. So, generator means a generator means a simply the generator is converts, convert means a chemical energy or hydroelectrical energy into mechanical energy. Let us take fan, electrical energy is converted into, into mechanical energy, correct? A cell that is a chemical energy is converted into electrical energy, even gas stove. So, means here chemical energy is converted into heat energy, means you now observe all these things here. One kind of energy is converted into another kind of energy, just a transformation of one kind of energy to another kind of energy, but there is no creation or destruction of the energy that is called conservation of energy. So, we will discuss some more basic concepts in the next sessions until Namaste.